Welcome everyone for another quick after work CPU tech vintage and retro all level talk here on our channel. About uh, 25 years later, CPU um, vintage and retro enthusiasts just figured out my understanding is last year, a year ago, it came to my attention basically this week that the last AMD K6 II Plus were actually die identical to the more expensive K6 III Plus, which featured twice the integrated level 2 cache. So, of course, that was, back in the day it was known, and that was, of course, a differentiator for the slower tier CPU that shipped with half 128K of integrated level 2 cache. But my understanding is until like a year ago, it was not known that the die was actually identical. So the usual binning and uh, defect uh, rate um, fusing off here was actually used there and that enables you, vintage and retro enthusiasts today, to potentially unlock that. My understanding is not all dies are equal, so it might not work on all CPUs, but according to people here on the Vogons forum and uh, sellers on eBay, it, many if not all high-end SKUs of 500, 550 megahertz uh, can be modified here. So people basically compared um, on this for forums, um, deleting here the heat, uh, heat spreader and comparing that and figured out, wait a second, it's basically only a one resistor difference. And so the factory sold state here with this zero ohm resistor populated and yields 128k of integrated level 2 cache and desoldering that with hot air or proper hot air station or soldering iron populating moving that here over um, one pin enables your mileage may vary but many people were successful at least with the highest clocked skews um, I find this really interesting. This is of course not unlike other like later Atlon or um, also this Goldfinger and different devices back in the days of AMD's K7 Atlon where um, various resistor values here on this overclocking card uh, could control the voltage multiplier uh, cache and FSB multipliers. So it was not unheard. By the way, back in the day, so I didn't have a K6. Um, I built a K6 system for my brother back in the day. Um, while I had still 240 megahertz wind chip or so, and then later, like basically always waiting a generation when I had the K7. I knew about this Goldfinger stuff on, like basically this was a, a plug-in card there. You had to open the plastic slot A plastic case um, cut there some some plastic office minus thinning probably and um, I didn't do that back in the day this overclocking stuff in general and also modifying a slot A Atlon or I, I had one I believe I had a 600 megahertz Atlon but back in the day this was like basically all the money you could spare for the highest skew like 600 megahertz Atlon you could afford so I didn't tinker with that, right? Back in the day, and not even like, you yeah, for overclocking, you had to open the case, um, have this overclocking card there. And obviously this K6 is only known now, 25 years later, right? But in my Atlon case, I didn't mess with that because I needed that highest performance system I could afford to embarrassingly not parallel build Rock Linux back in the day. That is the predecessor to our T2 Linux. So basically I didn't mess with that because I needed my expensive system to work, right? Um, I will probably go through my archive and in the office, my, my vintage and retro box, I I wonder what I have. I probably don't have a K6 III. I might have a 2 plus. I'm, I'm not even sure if I have a 2 plus. Maybe I only have a um, 2. Maybe I get one from eBay just for the fun of it. And by the way, the K6 was not AMD's product invention uh, for those who are new to this stuff back in the day the AMD K5 not the highest performance um, successful product only sold through the price and the K6 basically being the next gen company K5 
company's product they purchased um, and bringing the at the time prototype or in development next gen nx 686 to the market in the name of the um, k6 anyway amazing find i find it really interesting that people still dive into this which is i wanted to give a shout out so if you wanted like if you have this still around for your vintage and retro fun uh, just another anecdote here in computing history and um, yeah recurringly similar to today's product at amd and intel binning um, different skews or overclocking and and it's crazy that back in the day hundreds thousand if not potentially millions of devices were out there that could have had higher performance that's of course a little bit set in retrospect but certainly understand why do the manufacturers do that um, of course most of you of most of you know that but that is of course artificially creating product skews right if you have the highest highest and expensive product that is so expensive that few can afford it then you can only sell lower tier SKUs with disabled features so they intentionally disable that because obviously if you always would enable that for your lower price tiers nobody would shed out so much money for your highest end SKUs which is why not only back in the day but today Intel and AMD and all the other previously wire Centaur and, and uh, IBM and so on Sun have different tiers of course and where such features at times CPU cores, uh, clock frequencies, multipliers or in this case half of the cache are fused off just to create this artificial product segmentation and such uh, with that affordable entry-level SKUs. Um, yeah, amazing find. I uh, probably, yeah, so the gold finger. The other thing was the Athlon XP, which I, by the way, also have had at least built. Um, actually, I still have one. So there you could also, even with a pencil, so that was way easier. Um, with a pencil, uh, if you are new to this stuff, Athlon XP Palomino core there. And that was obviously much easier than this gold finger. Um, where did I have that? Somewhere here. Um, you could just bridge, I believe, some of those. Uh, instruction are here and not, not the best forum thing. Uh, one, one field of points. Uh, you had to bridge there was very various methods um, with a pencil or with liquid metal paint copper whatever silver stuff um, various methods of, of either taping over that and bridging this i believe with silver paint or just uh, at times like painting over that 20 times with a sharp pencil also apparently also work for most people to as far as i remember unlock um, any multiplayer stuff. Anyway, just wanted to share this amazing find that people still dive into this stuff. Certainly there are quite some people who nowadays create amazing dye photos uh, under a microscope and um, not only create nice pictures but at times find anecdotes or even people still analyzing all the inner, inner workings of even the initial Intel 8086 certainly um, I follow some of those people on Twitter and that occasionally share people. So yeah, there you have it. Wanted to share that amazing stuff. Maybe I get one of those just for the tinkering fun for a future video. Leave in the comments below um, if you want to see that. Um, the amazing thing um, back in the day why I still in theory like those CPUs because there was less hidden state and microcode in there, right? So in that from the operating system perspective I actually quite prefer the CPUs because they are just so much simpler right also back in the day risks translating x86 um, to internal risk already for those CPUs and I kind of it's basically like modern risk 5 CPUs of being more simple although that of course also with embedded um, management course and so on will quickly go out out of hand um, but otherwise, and in general, why I even, I mean, not only remembering the good old days of the highest performance we still have and basically having this, some, at least some CPUs lying around in my office archive boxes, but still for modern operating systems going forward, I would actually 
prefer like twice a course with less complexity, complexity certain, certainly less hidden state and firmware because as seen that like yeah, AMD Agiza surrounding um, BIOS complexity of 2023, you can't even control your Ryzen 7000 the way you want. And uh, anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this. Learn something. Leave in the comments below what you want to see, which vintage generator stuff or latest overclocking AMD 7000. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. And have a good day and I hope to see you soon for the next fun stuff to come.